What is happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan, and I do hope you lot are doing well, and welcome to today's video, which is a Chelsea news video, where I will be giving you information on Callum hudson Adoy's contract extension saga, Mason Mount and N'Golo Kante injury updates, and I'll be speaking on the feeling at Cobham and how players are buying into Frank Lampard's vision and new ethos for the club. But before we get into today's video, I would like to request that you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit that bell notifications icon because I upload all the time and I want you guys to keep it locked. And if you wanna do me a favor, why not like this video? All right, before we get into the Callum hudson Adoy stuff, as well as the Frank Lampard vibe around Cobham and Chelsea FC and what people have been saying about the coach, I wanna get through some injury news. Mason and Mount enjoyed a bit of a kicking in the Norwich game away at Carrow Road and he took a little injury on his calf muscle. Obviously, he had to come off and be substituted in that game. He was sort of hobbling around the touchline uh, and looks like he wasn't struggling a little bit, but the way Frank Lampard has spoken about the injury, it doesn't sound that serious and he will be assessed before the game at Sheffield. If it is maybe something that they want to be 100% sure of, then maybe Ross Barkley comes in for the number 10 role. But Mason Mount is in searing form. Obviously, he's got two goals in two games and is looking incredibly effective under Frank Lampard in terms of his general play, his pressing, etc. Lampard will be wary not to stop this run of good form. And Sheffield United at home would be a perfect fixture, really, to continue on and maybe even grab another goal for the young English midfielder. So... Hopefully his calf gets better and we can see him at Stamford Bridge next weekend. Moving on to N'Golo Kante. Now sadly I think his injury is a little bit more serious. One that he's been carrying for about a week or so in his ankle. Um, they were assessing him sort of before the Norwich game and obviously he wasn't fit enough to play and you've got to be extra careful now of N'Golo Kante ever since his injury at the end of last season. Frank Lampard values him incredibly highly so he wants to sort of wrap him up in cotton wool essentially and if he doesn't need to play him, he, he won't essentially. So if he does still have slow rehab with his ankle, then perhaps we won't see him feature until after the international break. Now that sounds frustrating, but if you look at the positive performance from Mateo Kovacic away at Carrow Road this weekend, then it's not that bad. Um, Kovacic plays that role incredibly well. He was one of the standout performers against Norwich. And like previously stated in this video, the only game left before the international break is against Sheffield United at home. The gaffer will certainly be feeling confidence in Kovacic to basically play maybe even any level of opposition at the moment in terms of how positive his performance has been. So therefore, he'll throw him in over N'Golo Kante with no problems at all. And then Lampard and Chelsea can make sure N'Golo Kante is 100% recovered and fit for the return of the domestic campaign. Cool, so before we move on to the feel-good factor of Frank Lampard's Chelsea and what pundits and players have been saying about him, let's talk about Callum hudson Adoy. Now noises around the club have come out and I've said before there is an understanding, there's an agreement between hudson Adoy and Chelsea. The interesting rumour here is whether the contract is actually signed or not and maybe there's a reason Chelsea are not announcing it, maybe they're trying to distribute good news throughout the season due to the transfer ban and they're perhaps being a bit strategic or perhaps there's a few fine details they're trying to comb out. Frank Lampard was asked about this in his press conference and he pretty much said, I've laid my cards on the table, you know how I feel about uh, hudson Adoy. everyone knows how I feel about him, how I f you know, think he's an, essentially a very important player, and it comes down to what the player and the club do now. But the way hudson Adoy is sort of behaving, he's posting stuff all the time about dreams come true, playing for Chelsea, it's all incredibly positive and happy, so it looks like he absolutely wants to continue playing for Chelsea and people around him have been sort of remarking on how they're happy he's staying. Football journalists are all publishing at the moment how they believe there is agreement in place and Chelsea can expect Callum hudson Adoy to be staying at Chelsea for a further five years. Like I said, it's just perhaps it hasn't been announced, but I wonder if there is a concern if there's a reason why he's not putting pen to paper, but expect him to be on the pitch soon for Chelsea, and with that, shortly following, expect a contract announcement. Right then, let's talk about Super Frankie Lampard, the Chelsea coach, getting his first Premier League win this weekend away at Carrot Road. 
the feel good factor is palpable around Chelsea. Obviously there's a few tactical concerns but I want to talk about what people are saying around the club um, and how people are reacting to his introduction as Chelsea manager over the first couple of months. Firstly, Joe Cole said when he was doing some punditry he was talking about how everyone has bought into the philosophy ethos and vision of Frank Lampard. Obviously Joe Cole is very close to the club and will know these things anyway but he talks about how everyone even if they're not playing everyone's 100% committed to his ideas. Now that's great to hear from an ex, well, ex Chelsea legend, a current Chelsea legend, ex Chelsea player. It's positive to hear but apparently journalists and other people that have seen him train at Cobham are all saying the same thing. There's a massively huge feel good factor the camaraderie is huge between all the coaches, Morris, Joe Edwards, etc., and the players. There's a good sense of community, communication, and togetherness at Cobham and on the training pitch and on the pitch. There is this theme of Academy FC at the moment, and Frank's reluctant to be like, look, I'm not all about the young players. Obviously, against Norwich, that was the youngest Chelsea side to be fielded in the Premier League for 25 years. But it looks like Players of all ages are buying in, as per Laqueta. People who are sitting on the bench, Marcus Alonso, he seems to be okay with it. And he seems to be sort of, again, all in with the Frank Lampard project. So people who aren't necessarily featuring a lot, no one's frustrated. And the one person that was frustrated is now playing for Arsenal and conceding penalties. A really interesting thing for me is how he's dealing with the young players because he absolutely wants to breed a next generation Chelsea and there's some really prevalent examples in this. Frank Lampard was training with Mason Mount on the pitch and he sort of had a moment with him and took him to the side and said look do you feel like a Chelsea player yet? He asked him the question do you feel like a Chelsea player? Young Mason Mount didn't know how to react he sort of smiled and laughed at the gaffer but you know, and then Frank explained how he laughed as well and they sort of moved on. But he wants these young players to feel like they can fill the shoes of the people they idolised, Frank Lampard's generation, you know, that he wants, he doesn't want these young players to feel like, oh, they've just come into the first team to like showcase their skills. He wants them to feel integrated and feel empowered by the shirt and feel like they are truly Chelsea players. Although this might be difficult for young players such as Mason Mount and Tammy Abraham, their performances on the weekend show they're perhaps starting to feel this elation maybe of being a Chelsea player that makes them play better. And the fact is, they've been Chelsea players for a long time. Obviously, Mason Mount's been a Chelsea player since he was six years old. I think Tammy Abraham something similar and they've won at youth level all through the ranks wearing the Chelsea badge. They're not some young players that have come in from elsewhere and trying to fill the boots and feel like they belong. So it should be slightly easier for academy players like Mason Mount and Tammy Abraham. One can imagine this might be more difficult for Frank to, I guess maybe induce the same feeling in someone like Christian Pulisic, who's a really dedicated, hard worker, talented player, but he's, you know, the new kid on the block in a new league, country, club, etc. But Frank Lampard wants to cultivate the next gen Chelsea and have this sense of togetherness, this sense of elite players that he was, you know, a golden generation that he was in and he's essentially trying to do that with this young lot. It's all very well and it sounds superb but there are a few problems apart from a few tactical problems like previously spoken of but also leadership. Frank Lampard actually came out in his post-match presser and said we're probably lacking a few leaders on the pitch and some people might need to step up. That made my ears prick up because that was or that has been hugely evident I guess for like the last couple of seasons. People like Espelicueta are a leader or certainly they're a senior player but they're not a proper captain or rather he's not a proper captain and maybe the other players like around his age don't have the captain qualities. For me players like Jorginho and maybe Rudiger could step up and fill this void. I know Jorginho has only been with the club just over a year and his English is a lot better but it's not perfect but he has the captain qualities. He directs his teammates around. He has a strong vocal presence, physical presence, he's good with the players, he's good with you know integrating with all sort of, I was, gonna, I was gonna say cliques of the team but there doesn't seem to be that much anymore. That was one thing Frank Lampard wanted to eliminate. Chelsea had a problem with you know the little groups in the dressing room, often it was the Brazilians, they'd always hang out with each other and separate them you know from the other members of the team essentially. It's interesting because Lampard's spoken about how this can ruin a team before. He's done interviews where he's explained that's actually what made the golden generation of England that he was in 
not function to its highest level because people were in their own little groups and cliques and stuff. So he'll be very, very lucid and conscious to this and he'll want a strong camaraderie from all his players in the squad regardless of the nationality or age. This is a hugely important factor for Chelsea moving forward or any Premier League team moving forward. There needs to be that togetherness. And Frank Lampard is the perfect candidate to forge this camaraderie within his squad. Someone like Maurizio Sarri and an idealist sort of philosophy style manager might be an elite manager, but he didn't have the power to sort of glue everyone together in the dressing room, which is so important in modern football. Frank Lampard is the perfect man to do that. And by all accounts, what people are saying, he is doing so. So there were positive noises before the Norwich game about how he's getting the players to respond, a good performance on the weekend, and then, you know, people around Chelsea Football Club, pundits, journalists have only reiterated that fact after the first Premier League win under Frank Lampard. So it's really hot outside and I'm melting currently in my studio so I'm going to wrap up for today guys. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have please do like this video and you know what get down in the comments let me know if you agree with everything I said in this video or you want to express any thoughts related to Chelsea Football Club. Remember to subscribe if you're new. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick. Other than that I'm going to keep it moving so enjoy the football and I will see you later. You so tough with that bad boy Talk. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby